Hey, hey, this is Eric with programwitheric.com. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about components. We're going to go a little bit further than our last video. If you missed it, check out the description below. I have a link to my last video on components. So this will go into a little bit more advanced topics and some new things that are happening with components. So we'll talk about the hash helper, contextual components, yield, a few things like that. And we're going to go pretty quick in this video, so I'm not going to go too in-depth, but it'll explain, we'll just do a few examples of some of these. If you look at here, the last Ember 2.3 release a little while ago, it mentioned a new, something called contextual components, and a hash helper. And the hash helper creates an object from arguments past it during invocation, and then returns that object. And then also contextual components, it looks like it's used mostly with add-ons, but we'll go ahead and do a, a quick, easy, simple example. So I have my Ember up here, and by the way, I already have on another page, I already have the server, server running, so we don't have to do anything there. So we'll go ahead and create a new component, we'll generate it, component, and we'll call this Office Stapler. And went ahead and got created there. So we'll look at our office stapler and our components. We don't have anything special in here yet. And just to make it easy, we're not going to create any other handlebars file. We'll just add our office stapler here. We'll delete the outlet. We're not going to use that. And we'll go into the components here and the office stapler handlebars file and just to make sure it's working, and we'll get to the yield in a second, we'll put in office stapler at the top. And we'll go ahead and take a look at our program here, and yep, the component is rendering correctly. So we've been kind of ignoring this. In the last video, I didn't talk about this, but here's the yield. And what this does is if we have the component in block form, see this is inline form. If we have it in block form, and that means you have a, a pound sign here, and then you have an opening and closing, you open it and close it, you can actually have the yield will yield whatever is inside here. So I can type in something like inside component here, and then inside here I'll put in before and after. And I'll type after here. And you can see, since now I, the component is in this block form, if I look at page here, I have before, inside component, after. I'll put a break here, too. So I have before, before, inside component, that's where it's yielding it. Uh, that's where it's yielding in here, inside component. And then I have after. So that's kind of how it is. So it's taking it's taking this handlebars file. It's displaying what's inside our components that we set up inside the office stapler handlebars file, but it's also keeping what's inside here. Now, there's a lot, a lot of things we can do here. So if we go back to the office stapler, uh, component file. Let's add a quick property and we'll just call it uh, number. Really bad name, but let's put a hundred here. And let's say we wanted to access that number inside our component. Well, of course, inside here we can just do, do the double curly brace and do number and that would display it. But we can also, I'll delete the before and after here. We can also pass the whole component and all the properties over with yield. So we can do something like this, yield this. And then inside the application, we can do off a stapler and do as, and then we can call it prop, just for short for property. And then inside here, we can do the double curly brace again, and we can do prop dot number.
and if we save that now you can see the hundred here so it actually since the yield is yielding everything inside the component it would yield all the properties now we have access to it and we can see there's a hundred here but uh, with the new way to do it and you can use this hash helper is we can instead of doing this we can go back to our template file and instead of yielding the whole component we can just choose individual properties to yield so to do that you would put this parentheses hash and then we can call it a name um, we can call it my number and then we pass in the name of the property which is number in this case so if we go back here to our application file we should now have access to my number so if we if we leave it number here you can see now it's gone there's nothing inside here but if I change it to my number now we have the hundred again so what this is doing this this my number it's looking at the hash file the hash that we set up here and it's passing this property over my number equals number so we can also do things like this we can we can put color equals red or staples equals 100 so we can have a bunch of properties in here and then inside our application file we can change it to color and then staples and then we can see it we actually put a hundred staples in there too so that's kind of confusing so let's go back here we'll make it I don't know 250 and to make it a little bit more obvious what's happening we'll go back to the application file and we'll just name them so favorite number and then we can put in color and then finally staple number staples and then so there we are we have our favorite number 100 color red number staples 250 so that kind of gives you an idea of how to pass values from inside your component back outside and so forth um, so let's take a look at one other thing and this is uh, actions and using a well, one second here well so let's take a look at closure actions so that's one of the things so we've talked before in the last video you can pass stuff into your component and as you see here you can easily get your properties back out of your component but let's say in this office stapler we wanted to uh, create a component or have an action and have that action be triggered so let's take a look here and look at our controller and we don't actually don't have a controller yet for our application so let's create a controller for our application. So Ember G controller application. Great. And then inside this application controller, we'll add a click action. And just to make it easier, we'll do you click this. And then we want to make sure that this click action, oops, let's do this. Actions. We'll get to this. We could, this is a better way to do it. There we are. And we'll call this pressed. You press this. We'll get to the click in a second. So we have this action. It's called pressed. And every time it's pressed, an alert box come, uh, opens up. And we have this in our application. Let's uh, move that. Application.js. 
Okay, that's better. Application.js. So we want to be able to trigger this action from our component that we created. So if you look at our component, our office stapler, uh, we want to pass it in there. We want something to be triggered inside the component that will then trigger this action. So let's take a look at our application handlebars file. And in the past, you could have done something like this. You could type in uh, action equals, uh, and then you call pressed. And then inside your office stapler, we can now, now we'll use a click event here. And then we can do this.send action and we'll it by default it will use the action that we have there and by the way this click action is part of the ember components you have several event names available to you and one of them is the click action here so that means that anywhere inside the div tag or inside the component you click it will trigger this action so let's see if that works. Yep, so you can see here you press this. I clicked I pressed I clicked inside the component and it did trigger this. So what it did is this click action takes this dot send action and by convention, since we called this property action here, it takes this action here and calls pressed which it then gets from the application controller here and it calls this you press this so <clears throat> another way to do that and this is what we're calling closure actions is instead of doing it this way you would separate it with a with these like this action equal action pressed and what this does is <clears throat> now when you do the click event and do one more thing we'll pressed equals action pressed and so this will take the <clears throat> the controllers pressed action and it'll assign it to this pressed property so then we can go into the component here <clears throat> Instead of doing this dot send action, we can do this dot adders dot pressed. And remember, this dot adders is has all your properties that were passed into the component in here. And so it takes pressed and it acts just like as if it was a method that you can call. We just do pressed here, and if we refresh. There is a problem here. It's not coming up. One second. I know what's wrong. If we go back here, save it. Make sure everything's saved. Refresh. All right, now it's working. So you can see here, it's taking the pressed property. And now it's a closure action, so it's attached to the action pressed, which is coming from the controller. So anytime I click anywhere in this component, now I get this, you press this, and that's essentially closure actions. So there's one more thing I want to uh, show you guys, and that's contextual components. So this is a little more complicated, so let's close this, <clears throat> and we'll generate a new, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll generate a couple of new components. We'll uh, generate an office chair. And we'll generate uh, office supplies. So one thing you can do now with your components. So this office supplies, we want it to be able to display the office stapler and office chair. So we can go back to the templates here and go back to office supplies. And from here, we have the yield. So we can do something like we did before. 
with the hash. But this time we can do something called stapler. And then we can do, I have to do another parentheses here, just to make this simpler. Put this down here. And we'll use what's called the component helper. And then the component helper takes an argument and we can pass it the name of the of the the other component. So we'll call this alpha stapler. And we'll also pass in the chair. And that would be office. And this is the name of the component chair. So now we have this yield here, and it's going to yield both the stapler and the chair, uh, the office stapler and the chair. And just to make things a little interesting, we'll go into the office, excuse me, the office chair here, and we'll just say this is an office chair, so we know what's in it. Stapler, we can also do this is a stapler. And now we can go back in here and we can use our component in block form. So office supplies 1p. Office supplies, we can do as office. And then we close it. And then inside here, we can call each component with the dot notation. So we can do office.stapler and then office.chair to make things easy. Break. And here it's a little confusing, but it says this is a stapler, this is an office chair. So I'll put this here, I'll put each, each one second example. This is a stapler, this is an office chair. So you can see it's grabbed both components and it was able from this component to display both of these components because I'm yielding both of these. In fact, this office stapler is the same thing as this component here. So we can do everything we just did there. So we can do as prop. We can put it in block form. And close it that way. And then we can do bold and do curly brace prop dot my number we can do prop dot color and if we take a look loaded so now we have 100 and red this is stapler so you can see it's grabbing all these values from it so that, in a nutshell, is contextual components. Uh, you can see you can hide. So this one component could have multiple components in it, and then it could hide those val those from you. Like I said, in the documentation, it said this is mostly used with add-ons, but you can certainly use it for other things. I hope that helps. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe below. And also, you can check out my Ember.js cookbook. Below, the links are in the description. Thanks.